Hi, welcome to the latest edition of Sodexo's expert video series. I'm Simon Lilly, Director of Marketing for Healthcare at Sodexo. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Alex Hammond. Alex is Head of Sustainable Procurement and Supply Chain at NHS England and has developed and implemented a range of net zero programmes and a carbon reduction programme for NHS England and has also been instrumental in the net zero supplier roadmap. Welcome, Alex, to today's video series. Thanks so much, Simon. Can we start off by, let's start off with the basics. So tell us a little bit about decarbonisation of the supply chain and how important that is in achieving uh, the NHS uh, net zero goals. The NHS has a huge impact. We uh, equate to about four to five percent of the UK's total emissions, roughly equivalent to the country the size of Denmark. Um, the supply chain covers about 60 to 70 percent of those emissions. So we're looking at a huge amount of emissions that come from our supply chain. So it's really important that we put in place activities to make sure that our supply, suppliers are on board with us. So what's the, what's the biggest challenge in that decarbonisation programme? I think part of the challenge we have as NHS England, as a central team, is engaging with our suppliers in a meaningful way. We obviously want to set out really clear targets and goals and make sure that they're on board with our ambition to be net zero health service by 2045. But it's making sure that we get that meaningful engagement. And you know, we've put together our net zero supplier roadmap, which sets out the requirements of our supply chain over the next 10 years. But we want our suppliers to go above and beyond that, not just to sort of hit the, the minimum targets, because it just won't get us to where we need to get to if, if we're, we're all just going at the minimum level. So it's really about finding the ways of having those meaningful conversations, getting suppliers that are doing really great things, sharing their good knowledge with their competitors um, and, and with the rest of the supply chain to make sure that we're all raising the bar on net zero. And, and how, how, how do you encourage that sharing? Later this year, my team will be launching the Evergreen Sustainable Supplier Framework. And this is essentially a common language that we've created between suppliers and the NHS to talk about uh, the net zero journey. So um, it also includes areas of social value, including modern slavery. And it's essentially a, a way where we can get our suppliers to tell us what they're doing above and beyond those minimum standards. But to get higher up in those levels, to get the, the highest levels of, of understanding within the Evergreen framework, suppliers need to be making those, those links. And so what we're looking to do is, is create collaborative partnerships and groups where we can make sure that our suppliers are able to share that information. Um, we want to really work with our small and medium-sized enterprises and make sure that they have the opportunities to, to leverage some of the, the, um, the great things that our bigger companies are able to do with their, their more significant resources. Personally, having spent time in the NHS and outside of the NHS in commercial organizations, how do you achieve that balance between you know, cost efficiencies that businesses need to drive now more than ever, yeah. but also the sustainability objectives that you're asking them to deliver? It's a really important question and it, it really hinges on the success of our program. And I think what, what I always come back to when I think about this is that sustainability at its essence, its most fundamental, is about doing things better with fewer resources and with, with more efficiency. And so when we can create a real sustainable marketplace for the products and services that we buy, we will use fewer resources, we'll know more about where our uh, products and services are coming from, deeper down the supply chain, um, we'll be using more circular economy principles and, and less of a waste culture where we just throw things away after we've used them. So in a lot of ways, sustainability really promotes the idea that the NHS is trying to achieve around being as efficient as possible. And so I think it's a really important and essential part of getting us to a, a, a more um, cost-efficient NHS. What does best practice look like then? I guess it relates to the Evergreen framework. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that we need to keep in mind with the NHS is that our market is enormous from what we buy from. So we, we buy just about every product uh, and service out there. So we need to be really careful about creating a sort of one-size-fits-all approach to best practice. And that's why with the Evergreen Framework, we've co-developed that with our supply chain to um, ask the questions and, and, and understand where our suppliers are in terms of being able to provide 
the best products and services, but also what the NHS needs to get to us to net zero. So specifically, a lot of things that we've done in the, in the team around scaling up really good practice. We've got some great work around walking need reuse, remanufacture medical devices. We've got people in the NHS doing these great things. We're giving them, we're taking that information, you know, providing how-to guides to the rest of the NHS to scale that up. So it's great to see those things happen bit by bit. What we really need is our suppliers to be saying, okay, what is it that sits in our supply chain, in our manufacturing, in our deeper supply chain that is causing the, the significant carbon impacts? And how do we begin to address that? What are, we, what are we doing over the next one to five to 10 years to 20 years time to address that and really get to net zero? Okay. I, I know at Sodexo, we're doing some, some great stuff. We're very proud of you know, things like Waste Watch, where we're reducing food waste. Mm -hmm tremendously across our sites. But looking beyond that, we're also doing some wonderful work in terms of wider social value. Yeah. Talk to me about the social value in its wider context and does that come under this 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 program? It's not just net zero, it's wider Of course, social value. yeah, absolutely. So in April 2022, we launched the, the social value model, which you're familiar with, which is that, that requirement for every procurement to have um, mm. a minimum 10% weighting on uh, net zero and social value. And we made net zero a mandatory a theme, the fighting climate change theme, because the, the urgency and the criticality of that agenda. Um, but absolutely, that the other, the other themes that's in social value are so important. Is there any particular focus you would advise suppliers in terms of that wider social value, you know, gender equality, apprenticeships, ex-offender recruitment? Or are all of those great things that they, they should be trying to deliver? Yeah, it's, it's got to be relevant, right? It's got to be relevant to the contract. And that's a really important fundamental point of the, yeah. of the social value model. And it's not really a one-size-fits-all approach. But what I would say is that the agenda around, um, around reducing health inequalities is really important. And the NHS England is working on a, an update to the NHS long-term plan. And I think that will really help shape some of the conversations that happen going forward. The modern slavery agenda is also hugely, hugely important. And I think we'll be seeing, suppliers will be seeing more questions around what they're doing to eradicate modern slavery in their supply chains, ensure that they're not, it's not being there in, in the first place. If I can just finish up on, on, on one last question then. Um, our video series are watched by providers, healthcare providers, but also suppliers. In terms of the ask from you, um, around, particularly around resourcing, are there investments in people that you would expect suppliers and providers to be making to drive this agenda? And are you already seeing that? Yeah, you know, that's a really, really good point. And, and we are a small team within NHS England. We have limited resources across the NHS to drive this agenda. And we really appreciate when suppliers are pushing and supporting people and, and providing resources to our people within the NHS also bringing in new people, and I think that absolutely, you know, where we can where we can partner with our supply chain to improve people's opportunities is really, really um, appreciated. Brilliant, Alex. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, we all feel this agenda is, is is so important, and I know it's a deck. So we're thoroughly enjoying actually uh, the wider social value challenge and building that as a kind of an everyday part of of what we do. So thank you for your time. Thanks so Appreciate much. It. Thanks.